There is that cliche line, I could have had a V8. I promise I'm not going to be using it. Excess leads to success, especially in the automotive world. The Land Rover Defender is incredibly capable off-road, more than most will ever need. But since more is always better, the engineers have stuffed one of these under the bonnet. And for good measure, it's supercharged because, you know, the Excess equals success business case. It can be had in the two-door 90 and four-door 110 models. For now, at least, it's missing in action in the new 130 with its more humane third row of seating. If the V8 is your heart's desire, you're gonna pay for it dearly. The retail price of this is $113,000. That's more than twice the price of a base Defender 110 and some twenty-five dollars to $30,000 more than a Ford Bronco Raptor or Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. Now, compared to a Mercedes G-Wagon, this is $25,000 less, so there's your bargain. Land Rover only offers the V8 fully loaded. The only way to lower the price is to go with the 90, which is three grand less. The only options on this is a protection package, including these mats, and a Wi-Fi hotspot package, adding around $900. The Santorini black paint is standard. Here it is in all its glory. Five liters of displacement divided by eight. Supercharged, 518 horsepower, 461 pound-feet of torque. And if that exhaust note didn't catch your ear, here's more. For an encore, there's a sport tone setting. Sounds much the same on the outside because the difference is augmentation in the cabin through the sound system. Not everyone shares your love of excess. The 8-speed transmission never hiccups. It's crisp and always in the right gear. Not sure that people really use these, but they sure do feel good to the touch. To save space on the console, the Terrain Response 2 modes are called up here. The V8 has a new dynamic setting. Together, these cover every possible kind of ground surface and situation, maybe even one for when your spouse is angry at you. <laughs> that can be bumpy stuff. Air suspension is standard. There's up to 11 and a half inches of it. There's all sorts of off-road information available, like pitch and side angle, differential locks, and water fording sensors. It's good for 35 inches of that. Finally, there's unique spring and damper rates, plus a new electronic active rear differential. 15-inch front discs with six-piston Brembos, too. So how much of a difference does the V8 make? Well, the inline six version of the Defender will do the zero to 60 dash in about six and a half seconds. This easily carves a second off that, maybe two, uh, it would be close. The most powerful Defender ever, top speed is around 149 miles an hour, according to Land Rover. I'll take its word for it. But power is not the only thing. There's sound. And it is a lovely sound, it really is. Even listening for supercharger wine, there's little to none. Think about it, a V8 in a Defender? Old school in an entirely modern way. With great power comes great responsibility. Let's check out the brakes. That would be my gear shifting in the background. Uh, very good brakes. And the auto stop start system, very, very good. You almost don't notice it. Take my foot off the brake. It restarts very smoothly. One thing about the throttle response, it's kind of hard to modulate this and not get a little bit jerky. And so city driving could be a little, well, jerky. Um, put it into eco mode and it smooths it out a bit. Pro tip. It can be driven smoothly, but all that oomph from a supercharged V8 means a little concentration. 
Oftentimes, off-road champs are on-road chumps. Defender is almost car-like on the road. No wandering in the lane, no micro-corrections. The driving position, nice and high. It's what people want from their SUVs. That is not exactly conducive to good handling. But I've got to say, the Defender goes around a curve pretty nicely. Not a 911, but in class, it's excellent. And the ride quality is supple, very, very comfortable. It could easily be a daily driver, though kind of a thirsty one. It shouldn't be any surprise that the fuel economy of the V8 Defender isn't exactly Prius-like. The EPA rates it at 16 MPG, and it requires premium fuel. Ouch. There's the expected active electronic safety kit like automatic emergency braking, and the adaptive cruise control works nicely. I can see why those that can afford the monthly payments and the gas would want one of these if for the soundtrack alone. Obviously, there's going to be V8 growl here. And it is a wonderful thing, but on the whole, this is a very quiet vehicle and not an awful lot of wind noise. You'd think there'd be a bunch of it coming off the A-pillar, this being about as aerodynamic as a house, but no, it's very well managed. Kind of killed me that I couldn't take this off-road. My plans fell through, but I drove the six-cylinder on the back 40 of Dirtfish Rally School. Some highlights of that skirmish. I don't know, you'd have to be either very daring or kind of stupid to get this thing stuck. It just plows through, no sweat. If you forget the 38 degree approach and 40 degree departure angles, there are graphics to remind. The 110 has a 28 degree breakover, add three for the 90. Overhang is the same for both. Maximum suspension articulation is 19.7 inches. 45 degree side slopes and inclines are possible. That's not happening today. Not a lot of steep grades here at Dirtfish or boulders, so I'm gonna be concentrating on mud and ruts. Got a lot of that here. That's what I've set the terrain response to. This is equipped with all-terrain progress control, a low-speed cruise control that lets drivers concentrate on not bashing up the vehicle. It's more fun being in control, though. Proximity sensor. Between those and multiple camera views, this very expensive 4x4 should stay fairly dent-free. These angles are genuinely helpful in tight situations, along with looking very cool. I gotta say, the camera views are very, very helpful. I spent a couple hours on the extensive Dirtfish trail system and never felt a second of concern over the six-cylinder Defender's capability. Have to believe the V8's performance will be the same, maybe even better in sandy conditions. Tires are always important too. Here's a look at the clear sight camera view in the V8 that I'm driving. It could be valuable off-road. At the very least, it impresses passengers. If you think 113 large buys the kind of wood and leather isolation chamber found in a Range Rover, well, no. That's not to say Defender's materials lack quality. They look and feel great, exposed fasteners and all, like an Hermes hiking boot with designer crampons. The exposed structural beam is a thing of beauty and strength. I do wonder how the grippy Alcantara will age. The wheel is heated, by the way. This is a dark space that absorbs light. The big glass roof helps a lot. Passengers will love the infinite handholds, especially in extreme maneuvers. Plus, the seats covered in Dynamica material are heated and vented. Personally, I find these dials ingenious. It keeps controls off the touchscreen and saves space at the same time. Like many vehicles these days, the cluster can be reconfigured. Defender offers many, many ways to make it yours more than usual. Remember, this is all standard stuff in the V8 model. There are more storage cubbies than most SUVs, and that's saying a lot. It's like a backpack with tons of pockets and compartments. This is not center console storage. I mean, it is, but really, it's a fridge, and it works well. For once, I have cold water on a chute. Jaguar Land Rover keeps updating its user interface. This is the latest. Dubbed PIVI Pro, the screen is 11.4 inches and has excellent response. Graphics are great, too. 
There are also natural voice commands using the wake phrase, Hey Land Rover. My butt is cold. Increasing vehicle temperature. Okay, that's an easy one. Let's throw it a curveball. Hey Land Rover, I need to buy some camping gear. Pike Place Market, setting destination. Not that Pike Place Market isn't kind of a cool place, but was hoping more for something like REI. It's not as good as the BMW or Mercedes tech. Take solace in the punchy 700 watt Meridian surround sound system. It's really good stuff. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are here in case you prefer that. The wireless phone charge pad has an integrated antenna to boost reception. Could be life-saving in the wilderness. Defender's back seat is big enough for three adults, at least my size, I'm five foot nine. Headroom, very generous, same with knee, leg, and foot room. The cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent. This is a comfortable space. The only gripe I have back here are these small pockets. Otherwise, there's most everything passengers want, like separate dual zone climate and heated seats for the outboard passengers. You'll need to explain how those dual function controls work. The floor is pretty flat, so footroom is good, pockets on both seat backs, and phones can be charged here. It's a wide and comfortable space. You may not need the optional third row of seating, which is kind of cramped and takes up a little cargo room. The spare's mounted on the back, so it's easier to get to. On a muddy trail, you don't want to be digging under here to get to it. But on an everyday basis, it makes the door heavy. And if you're loading things to the curb, it blocks your access. Also, I live in the Pacific Northwest. I prefer hatchbacks because it provides shelter from the rain, which we get a lot of here. You'll want the rubber mats. The plastic floor is on the slippery side. Easy to clean though. There's room for muddy boots, not much else. Lots of clever ways to stash gear and equipment away. This truck is a Leatherman tool on wheels. The air suspension can be dropped back here for loading. No remote releases. You will be going around to the back doors to drop the seats. Notice the slope of the load floor here. Here's the thing. It can go completely flat, but you need to work at it. These need to be removed, a little awkward. Then there's this process. Nice that Land Rover offers up the option, even if it takes time to accomplish. The result is a level space big enough to play pickleball in. That's 79 cubic feet. And I think you all know that I appreciate 40-20-40 splits. Seats up, there's an impressive 39 cubic feet. That's 13 packs of the two-ply if I were doing the TP trunk test. Also, there's a fan to keep dogs cool back here, or humans if you order the cramped third row. It also works for cake. I had to deliver two large ones to a wedding on a hot day, and yes, it was a pain loading because there was a car behind us. The rubber mat kept them from sliding. The lovely and charming was very concerned, but they were delivered in perfect condition. Whew. As for design, some think the new one is too gentrified. I'm a fan. Time moves on, people. Strong and stoic, it recalls classic Defenders, updating the vibe without missing a beat. The square motif in the greenhouse is new. In black, it disappears, which is good for those who don't like it. While I am a form follows function kind of guy, I have to say I like the way it looks when it's visible, maybe simply because it's distinctive. The black paint also hides the signature glass panels in the roof. They bring a little bit of light into the dark cabin. In case you're wondering, these are cosmetic. Don't use them for traction when loading stuff onto the roof. V8 spotter's guide, yeah, there are these, but quad pipes are what you're really looking for. Time for red light, green light, folks. Green light. The power, performance, and on-road handling of the V8 Defender are best in class. If you put baseball cards in your bike spokes as a kid, you'll buy it for the sound alone. Defender is incredibly capable off-road. I'll assume most owners will never tax its true capabilities. Line for line, the design is about as good as it gets, inside and out. Yellow lights, the rugged interior materials are cool. In black, it sucks the light out of the space. The cargo area is big and useful, but needs effort to maximize utility. The power is addictive. Throttle response can be touchy when driving in the city. 
Red light. The V8 is a big step up in price from the inline six for buyers wanting bragging rights. It sucks down premium fuel like a marathoner chugging Gatorade, hardly eco-friendly. And there's the Land Rover reputation for maintenance, which will scare some away. Statistically, the brand has been steadily improving. JD Power rates Defender as average, and there is the four-year, 50,000-mile limited warranty. I can see emotion taking over. Defender is extremely appealing in so many ways. This engine adds even more passion. Nice of Land Rover to shove a V8 into the engine bay of the Defender. It sure sounds great. Hmm, yeah, but is it worth the extra cost? Only you can tell for sure. Me being raised a practical Midwest boy, I think I'd go with the inline six. It has plenty of power. But logic doesn't always satisfy the soul. The supercharged V8 certainly does. No doubt, excessive thrust, operatic soundtrack, and heroic capability of the V8 Defender all but guarantee success, even at excessive prices. A confession. As an automotive writer trying to offer up the best information, I struggle with the reliability thing. For starters, automotive quality has increased exponentially across the board in the last 10 years. And some of the metrics include small details like switches and dials, not engines and transmissions. It's tough to nail down accuracy. JD Power rates Defender 78 out of 100. Lexus GX scores 83. Acura MDX, 77. We've all heard anecdotal stories about different brands, and for YouTube personalities ranting on and on, it's entertaining, but I try to rely on data. If I'm boring that way, well, so be it. Real quick, I have a quote service. You can use mine, it supports this channel, or you can use cars.com or Costco or any other service, but I highly suggest checking out at least one of them, okay? They really do help you buy a vehicle, and these days, you kind of need that. Feel free to tip your favorite YouTube automotive guy, too. There's always super thanks to do that. I bring that up because premium fuel is nearly $6 a gallon in the Pacific Northwest. Filling this beast up was painful. All right, one more hit of the V8 sound. Lovely. This is the end where I normally leave you guys with a fun fact, but this time I'm going to show you behind the scenes of this shoot. I think you all know that I shoot every frame of my videos normally, and I can't do that without the help of Martin Campbell. Um, this is always the first shot I do when I'm doing GoPro stuff. As always, special thanks to Martin Campbell for driving duties so I can shoot running footage. Martin, would you like a refreshing beverage from the cooler, <laughs> from the fridge? Yeah, that is too cool. Yeah, and it is cool. Uh, I mean, literally cool. cool. It actually works. <laughs> Typically, that shot is so I can test the audio, and of course, to give Martin credit. What a great guy. Now, I am the only person that wakes up in Seattle and sees sunny skies and says, darn, when it's foggy or cloudy, the light is nice and even, especially inside the car. When it's sunny, you get lots of harsh shadows. Uh, you know, you can see the shadow of the GoPro. Um, here's now, another story that I did. See, GD it's pretty 60. ugly. On this particular morning, it was really foggy, which presents its own problems. If you face a GoPro forward and start moving, yeah, that happens. So in these conditions, I have to mount the GoPro looking backwards so I don't get all sorts of fog in the lens. And finally, I do try to get creative with my framing, but sometimes it's just that I'm trying to crop something out, like, say, another car. I really do try to crop other cars out of the shot because it's distracting. I don't like to use shots like this. I always feel the best look at a car and its features starts with good photography. And I started in this business as a TV news photographer. I've always loved cars. I've put my passions together. So there you go. Uh, subscribe to this channel. 
click notifications. Follow me on Twitter. I'm pretty active there. You can ask me a question there or just leave it here in the comments, okay? All right. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk. And this is a nice blast from the past. What house number, street, town, and state would you like to go to? It's alive. Uh, no, stop. Pardon? Please say the house number, street, city, and state, or say change country. This car is possessed. No, cancel. What did I do to turn that Sorry, on? Sorry. No. Command. No.